Do you want to become a cyber security analyst and get a job in less than six months? This video will exactly show you how to do it. Hey there, welcome back. My name is Sohel and I'm a cyber security consultant and engineer based in Australia. This video is comprised of two sections. In the first section, we'll go tactical and talk about the steps that you need to take to get there. In the second sections, we'll discuss some of the common mistakes IT professionals make when they're trying to get into the cybersecurity industry. So make sure to watch the video till the end to avoid those mistakes. Now, before I talk about the steps that you need to take to become a cybersecurity analyst, the first thing that I'm going to tell you is that you don't need a degree to get there. Uh, if anyone is telling you that you need to have a master's degree or bachelor's degree in IT or cybersecurity, they're not telling you everything. They're just gatekeeping. I've done it. A lot of people I know have done it as well. The university degree doesn't add much value. I'm not saying that that's a, not a good thing, but you can allocate the same time into other studies in your life, let's say, getting practical hands-on experience and learning about tools, even certifications, those are the things that add more value to your CV and resume. Having that master's degree on your CV, I don't think it will do much a favor for you. And if you have a look at some of the job searching websites, you'll see that having a degree is not mandatory anymore. So if you are in a mindset that, oh, I have to get that degree to get started, I'm here to tell you, no, you don't need it, all right? Now, university, out of the picture, all right? So the first thing you need to do in your journey to become a cybersecurity analyst is to have that strong IT foundation knowledge. What do I mean by that? IT foundation means having a good knowledge about operating systems, how Windows operating system works, how to navigate that operating system, like the basic computer literacy. If you don't have that one, you need to get yourself up to the speed. Like, how can you even imagine becoming a cybersecurity professional if you cannot even open a browser and do some stuff with that browser? So the first step is to gain those foundational IT knowledge. As part of that, we have networking that you need to understand. On top of that, we have Linux basics and cloud computing. Now, what do I mean by networking? By networking, I don't mean that you have to get yourself Network Plus certifications and read the whole thing. Like when people talk about IT foundation, they see this, having CompTIA A+, passing that certification, then moving to the next one, getting Network Plus, and after that, Security Plus, and after that, CYSA Plus, like all the plus that you can think of. But that's not the thing. You don't have to get those certifications. And the reason for that is, let's be realistic here. If you go through CompTIA A+, yes, you're going to learn a lot of things about the IT, basic stuff, but I don't think you will need to know and understand about printers to become a security analyst. That's not going to do you a much favor. So what I'm trying to tell you here is it's okay to go through the those certifications and content, but you have to be picky and choose only the things that you need to understand and learn. Let's say with CompTIA A+, you don't have to learn about printers. Yes, you can actually refer to some of the sections that is about computers, fundamentals, cables, networking, and all that sort of stuff, which is great, but don't waste your time on unnecessary stuff. This is the same case with Network Plus. When I talk about the understanding foundation of IT, like networking, Network Plus is a good resource, but inside Network Plus, there are so many topics that you don't need in cybersecurity. Let's say for a security analyst role or SOC analyst role, you don't need to understand routing protocols. You don't need to learn how to configure a router or switch. That's not your job. That's network engineer job. So don't waste your time on unnecessary stuff, like I said. So you have to be choosy and picky. With networking, I would recommend you understanding TCP IP in depth, uh, routing basics like static routing, how routing works, how even like a different protocols works like DNS, SMTP, SSH, like all the famous applications and understand them from networking perspective, how everything fits together, UDP, TCP, all that sort of stuff. These are the things that you need to understand when it comes to networking. So far we have gone through IT foundation, networking, then we have only Linux and cloud computing left. With Linux, 
all you have to do is just understand the basics. You don't need to become a sysadmin to start your cybersecurity journey. With Linux, all you have to learn is how to navigate that operating system. Like we have a lot of distros and things like that. You just need to understand, okay, if I want to move from different folder, if I want to make a directory or files, permissions, adding users, just the basic stuff, guys, all right? That's more than enough because understanding Linux is going to help you in the long run and also with your job hunting phase because now you have a unique set of skill and knowledge. Having Linux knowledge is going to make you different compared to other people who just gone through CompTIA A+, Network, Network Plus or Security Plus. Hope that makes sense. Now, when it comes to cloud computing, what I mean again is just the basic guys. You don't need to become a cloud engineer or cloud guru, but you have to understand the terminologies in cloud. Like when I talk about different services in cloud, when you're invited for the interview, you need to understand and know small few things about cloud, how it all fits together, how to build virtual machines in there, networking in the cloud, all the basic stuff. And I think the best resources for you to learn for, I think specifically when it comes to Azure, it's AZ900 and there are so many free trainings out there on YouTube that you can refer to. So IT foundation guys is really important, all right? Don't forget that. Next, you have to dive in security specific tools. For SOC analyst, security analyst role specifically, you need to understand incident response, a little bit of digital forensic, uh, threat hunting a little bit, malware analysis, firewalls, IDS, IPS, these kind of things. But these are just broad when I say that. So I don't think it's going to make sense, but for an entry level role or security analyst type of role, you need to understand different SIEM tools and only focus on the tools and skills that these companies need. Let me give you an example. So when you look at the job description, there are certain tools and skills that that company needs from you. So you will understand what do I mean by learning security specific tools. Because the thing is, if you have just gone through some certification exam and when you apply for those roles, you're not going to get any response because you don't know how those tools work. So in step two, after you go through the foundation, you need to dive deeper into these tools. I'm going to name a few tools that you need to learn to increase your likelihood of getting interviews and nailing those interviews. The first thing is you need to understand about SIEM tools. Specifically, most companies these days are using Splunk or Rapid7 SIEM tools or Microsoft Sentinel. So there are so many trainings out there. If you don't know which one to choose, I would recommend BTL1 and Cyber Defenders and also Let's Defend. These are the platforms that provides you with the environment so you can learn about these specific tools. On top of SIEM tools, you have to learn about EDR tools, CrowdStrike and Microsoft Defender. There are so many trainings out there that you can use to leverage and learn these skills. Another example could be Nessus Vulnerability Scanning Tool. You can use that and learn that in your own house practically and write vulnerability report based on the result of that scan. So these are all tools and practical things that you can learn guys. And if you don't know how to learn this, I actually have a playlist where you can go ahead and watch and learn how to deploy a next generation firewall in Azure cloud. So you can actually send all the logs from the firewall to a Microsoft Seam Sentinel tool and you can learn everything practically. So there is no excuse for you to learn because I have provided you that learning material for free. All you have to do is just sit down, pay attention and do the labs. And it all will be free if you're using Azure Cloud for the first time. The last part of you becoming a security analyst is actually getting out there and getting that job and interview, which I think is the most crucial part of the journey. This part, which is called job hunting phase, requires dedication, hard work, and consistency. Here are some of the strategies that you can use to increase your chance of getting interviews. The first step is applying to multiple jobs in high volume. Like I always say to everyone, volume is king. The more you do, the better you get, the more results you will get. So imagine this, you apply to 10 jobs and there's another person who applies to hundreds of jobs. Who is going to get more interviews? Maybe you'll get one, but that person will get maybe five or 10. So you need to increase volume and monitor the job searching websites and apply aggressively. 
and for each job that you apply you need to modify your CV and tweak your CV based on the job description there are so many AI tools out there that can do that stuff for you now since we are talking about job hunting phase the important part when you're applying for these jobs is your CV and resume you need to make sure that you have a solid CV that highlights your skills and the things that you have learned throughout your journey. Your CV is your marketing brochure and tool. That's the only way you can sell yourself and sell your skill to the hiring manager. So you have to spend time on this and even maybe you need to purchase a services from someone who can write the CV for you because the goal here is actually to make sure when someone sees your CV in the first five or ten seconds they get interested about you so they want to learn about you so they can pick up the phone call and call you that's the whole purpose of a perfect cv to get interview and you cannot get interviews if your cv sucks so try to spend some time on it and try to write good headline summary section and your skills the last part in the job hunting phase where a lot of people miss is networking guys the old way of applying to jobs uh, is over people back then they just applied to jobs throughout the day and they got interviews and that's it the thing is these days especially after covid cybersecurity is so competitive these days and uh, you're going to face a lot of competition in your journey so you have to make sure that you are putting extra effort in this job hunting phase. What do I mean by that? You need to leverage tools like LinkedIn, build your brand there, establish meaningful connections with people and leverage those connections to get your first job in cybersecurity. Most of my jobs in Australia, most of the jobs that our students got in our programs was through LinkedIn alone. Because when you're establishing yourself on LinkedIn, you can communicate with hiring managers, HR people, security managers, and show your skills and brand yourself there accordingly. And those opportunities is going to be useful for you in the long run. So don't forget to leverage LinkedIn in your job hunting phase. So guys, to summarize, these are the steps that you need to take to become a security analyst in less than six months. The first step is foundational IT knowledge. All right, make sure to nail that part because without the proper foundation, the house will crumble and you're not going to get far ahead in the industry. The second step is learn security specific tools and learn them in a practical way. Because when you're invited for the interview, these are the things that you can talk about in the interviewing process. You have to somehow show them that you have done the job. You have done some projects, you have done some labs, so that way you can talk about all the things that you have learned in your journey. And the last part is, which I think is the most important part, is the job hunting phase. In that part, you have to have a solid CV, you have to have a solid LinkedIn profile, you have to network with other people so you can increase your likelihood of getting more interviews. And all of that only happens if you increase your volume. You're not going to get ahead if you're applying to only five or three or two jobs per day. You need to increase your volume and apply as many jobs as you can. Now, let's talk about some of the common mistakes that people make when they're trying to get into cybersecurity. The first one is getting stuck in learning phase. A lot of people I've seen before, they just get stuck in the phase number one. They just learn, learn, learn and they're always afraid to move to the next stage they feel that they need to become the perfect person for that specific job they just learn they consume things they just watch youtube videos but the thing is they're not actually moving ahead and forward you have to get yourself out there guys i know that confidence level that you're looking for will never come and the only way you can find out if you are good enough for that specific role in cyber is to actually getting yourself out there and do the thing and getting that job second thing is people hate networking they don't want to talk to people they don't want to put themselves out there guys the old way of applying to jobs are over you have to embrace the new ways which is getting yourself out there attending networking events talking to people on LinkedIn, providing your own value on LinkedIn, sharing your experiences and stuff like that. Don't miss this big part. You don't want to silently apply to jobs and not seeing the results that you see. And the third one is neglecting practical experience. Theory alone is not enough, guys. Make sure to get hands-on experience and learn the tools in a practical way. 
and try to create some real world scenarios for yourself while you're going through the learning process. All right, guys, if you found this video useful and helpful, all I need in return is for you to like this video and share it with your peers. And if you have any questions, make sure to drop them in the comment section. Thank you so much for viewing. See you in the next one.